In this example, let's try to factor the polynomial negative 4x squared plus 18x plus 10. Now, I see a couple of things right off the bat. Number one, this is a trinomial because it has one, two, three terms. And it's a quadratic trinomial because it starts off with the next squared. And I've got a couple of different methods that can handle these types of polynomials. We could try uh, the trial and error method, or we can factor this by grouping. And both of those would, would be good ideas. But before we get into all those details, there's something very important we need to talk about. Whenever you're asked to factor a polynomial, the very first thing you always try every time is you look to see if this guy has any uh, common factors among all the terms. Because if it does have any common factors, you can pull those out and then you're left with a smaller polynomial to factor if it's not factored completely already. And so that's, that's what we're gonna do first in this example. That's what we're gonna do first in every example. So I'm gonna look at these three terms here and I'm gonna see if there's anything common to those three. This term has an x squared, this term has an x, and this term doesn't have an x at all. So there's not a variable common to all three, but look at the coefficients, negative four, 18, and 10. All of those are divisible by two. So two is a factor of all of those. So what we can do is we can pull a two out of all three terms. And we're actually gonna do something slightly different than that though. Here's something else I need to mention. Whenever you're factoring a polynomial, it's not required, but it's preferable to lead off with a positive coefficient. It makes the algebra just a little bit easier. So if you're leading off with a negative like this, especially if you're already factoring something out anyway, let's go ahead and pull out a negative two, which will make our leading term of the polynomial be a positive two x squared because negative two times two x squared would give us negative four x squared. And then we'll have negative two times negative nine x would give us positive 18 x and negative two times positive five, I'm sorry, negative five, let's try that again, negative five would give us positive 10. And so you see by pulling out the negative two, we've actually made sure that our leading coefficient here was positive, which is a good thing. All right, so we have this partially factored, but this is not factored in any meaningful sense. We definitely can't stop here. Just pulling out a constant doesn't really mean much. That's not what I mean by factoring a polynomial. So what we need to do now is look at what's inside the parentheses and see if we can factor that. Now, your instructor might differ from, from the approach I typically teach. I usually teach this using tri the trial and error method. If your instructor does the grouping method, that's great too. Um, we're gonna approach this one though with the trial and error method. Because this is a trinomial that's a quadratic, I already know what this template, what the answer will look like after I factor it, assuming that it does factor. It's gonna be a linear polynomial times a linear polynomial. And I even know a little bit about these two polynomials here. For instance, I know that the leading terms, the first term here and the first term here, have to multiply to 2x squared. So I can look through all the options of things that multiply to give me 2x squared, and really there's only one, 2x and x. So I can go ahead and put a 2x here and an x here, so that if I foiled these two binomials, the first, the F-O-I-L, the first terms, 2x times x, That'll give me, give me my 2x squared. And then I also know that the last two terms that go here and here will have to multiply to negative 5. Now, now, if you've watched any of my other videos where I've talked about factoring, um, you'll remember that one, one thing I stress to my students is to not worry too much about the signs the pluses and minuses until a little closer to the end of the problem. They're very, very important, but it's not something that we wanna write down every case with a, a positive one and a negative five and a negative one and a positive five and all those different options. We're just gonna look for the factors of five. So the only factors of five are one and five. And so we might have a one and we might have a five or we might have a five and we might have a one. It, it could be either way. And so we'll start with a five and a one. 
Uh, now, a quick little side note. Why did I say you, you might have a one and a five or a five and a one? Wouldn't that be the same thing? Actually, not in this example, because being that the two X and the X are different, foiling this out would be a little bit different. It would give you a different result um, than if this was a one and a five. So we actually have to try both ways. And what we're looking for when we do that is we know the 2x squared is going to be good. We know either way the 5 will be good. What we're looking for is for the outer and inner terms to happen to add up to negative 9x, which I'm not really sure that's going to happen. So let, let's try it. We'll, um, we'll try a 5 and a 1 first. So 2x times x would give us 2x squared. That looks great. The outer would be 2x. The inner would be 5x. But here's a problem. 2x and 5x, if the signs could be anything they wanted to be, there's no way you could get a negative 9x. That's just not possible. So that can't be the right factorization. So, um, so let's take the 5 and the 1 out and maybe try this again with a 1 and a 5. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. 1 times x is x, and that could give you a negative 9x if the signs were just right. And I think we would have to have a negative 10x and a plus 1x. So I, I would make the signs fit. And, and then so I've got 2x squared taken care of. I've got negative 9x. And then I'm just hoping with those particular signs that positive 1 and negative 5 do in fact multiply to negative 5 and in fact they do. So we factored this polynomial here. If for some reason these guys did not multiply to negative five, I'd have to keep searching and trying other options and, and you know whatnot. But um, everything worked out. Um, if you wanna check this, you could FOIL this out just to make sure it gives you this quadratic, but in fact it does. So my answer would be negative two times two x plus one times x minus five and that'll be the factorization of this trinomial up here. Now, one last thing I wanna mention before I let you go is a, a, a very common mistake that a lot of students make. Um, here I've rewritten all the steps again. We had our polynomial, we factored out the negative two, and then we focused our attention just on this polynomial. Well, what a lot of students will do is they'll get so focused on factoring this quadratic and, and maybe they'll, they'll even factor it, but here's, here's what they'll forget. They'll forget to carry this two down to the next step. And so I see so many students will have this as a final answer, just the two X plus one times the X minus five. And that is the right factorization of the quadratic, but they'll just drop off the negative two because they weren't really using it in that step. So remember to carry this coefficient through in every single step all the way through the remainder of the problem. So anyways, if you remember that, you should be pretty good. And hopefully this example helped you understand how to factor trinomials a little bit better.